crouched over a tiny sputtering flame, a man in his advancing thirties enters the twentieth minute of waiting for the kettle to boil. Tea tastes sweeter for the toil and this tea has been a while in the making. Come baking heat or more commonly insuperable drizzle to the hum of insects uncounted and in varieties yet unknown to science, his weight goes on in defiance, a mixture of stubbornness and a grinding realisation that it is too early for beer. With pride he surveys his empire, tent stood proud against the backdrop of the sprawling heavens, the product of all his strength and muttered oath-strewn negotiations with his beloved. As a four and a bit year old tornado whips in and out, hiding the mallet and shouting at the top of his lungs for milk. But all that's behind him now. Now there's tea. Or there will be soon, probably, if the wind holds off and no one coughs in the direction of the burner. He becomes aware that the few bare scraps of skin not covered in a thin but potent mixture of insecticide is being gnawed at by flea or gnat. And he briefly calms himself by watching the new neighbours battle to put their tent up. It's impossible to avoid this campsite, Chardon Freud, and he knows that the people to his left watched him in the same vein. Then, hark, a hiss. The bliss of tea is near. Although he fears that this small joy will be unbalanced by the inevitable trek to wash up, people can and have walked shorter distances on pilgrimage than the walk to wash up or use the lav, and suddenly a sudden gust breaks his calm, and though no immediate harm is done, he knows they may be on borrowed time. His irritation compounded by the sudden explosion of wind chimes that now seem a legal requirement, every joint groaning from the confinement to his seat, only the scantest feeling in both feet, he dares to lift the lid. At last, bubbles, steam, tea.